Okay, all right. Hey everybody, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak before you today. Uh, I would be honored to have uh, your endorsement because uh, you know, I think our values of this campaign align closely with the values of the voters in, in this very influential ward. You know, our campaign is structured in a way unlike any campaign uh, in, in this race, Republican or Democrat, or really any Republican or Democratic race nationally among challengers. I'm proud to say that we have over 190,000 grassroots donors in this race. I'm proud to say that we have created a level of grassroots enthusiasm that has permeated now nearly 90% of Pennsylvania zip codes. I'm proud to say furthermore that we have 5,000 volunteers that are gonna be working in the field to really drive our message home to voters across Pennsylvania. I'm proud to say that we've already won and run statewide here in Pennsylvania. I'm proud to say that in 2014, Governor Wolf ran with my predecessor and received 1.9 million votes. And then in 2018, when I joined the ticket after I won a very difficult and competitive primary in 2018, that ticket received 2.9 million votes. Million more votes. In between a Trump narrow victory and a Trump narrow defeat in that. And I've done that the entire time, running on core progressive values that were once considered too left to run in the Democratic mainstream back in 2016, if any of you remember my first race. We didn't have you know, barely gas money in that first race. But this race, everything's different. We're the most well-resourced campaign nationally of any challenger, Republican or Democrat in any state. And unless you're a hedge fund billionaire from Connecticut writing yourself a check, you know, we're doing it the old fashioned way, $28 a pop. And that's the kind of campaign. And that enthusiasm has translated into the lead in the polls. It's translated into a level of grassroots enthusiasm that creates full rooms in counties all across Pennsylvania. We're in Berks County yesterday, Monco last week, you know, every red county, that's what it's gonna to take to win in this race here. We believe anyone in this ticket in this race can win, but we believe we present an incredibly strong opportunity to flip this seat and turn it blue when it's so critical that we replace Pat Toomey with a Democrat that's gonna to vote together like with other Democrats, and that's my commitment to you. If you trust me with your vote in May, you'll never have to worry about my vote in Washington, DC. Thank you. Okay, yes. Well, first, I, I, it should be noted that I've never taken a dime from the extractive industries, fossil fuels, uh, fr gas fracking industry, nor would I, would I ever. Second, um, I've been pretty consistent in my message on, on this, is that fracking produces natural gas that is a major part of our energy portfolio right now. About 40% of our electricity comes from natural gas. And we have seen now, with the invasion with Ukraine, that if you are not energy independent, your energy security is dependent on a nation like Russia that can create all kinds of problems and challenges. But I'm also have always been an ardent believer in climate change and have consistently maintained that as well too. In fact, in 2009, I was selected by the Environmental Defense Fund, the Steelworkers and the Sierra Club to champion 
for the Obama administration cap and trade list that would have created a market incentive to remove carbon from our economy because we believe then, as I, you know, I've always believed, that climate change is an existential crisis. Two things can be true at the same time. For environmental regulations, and it should not be regulated by people that are receiving money from those industries. But at the same time, But that is not something that I believe can be realistically achieved in a few short years. I think it's a much longer translation, excuse me, trans, uh, transformation. And that's what I've always consistently maintained. And when we do continue to make those, those, uh, that transformation, the workers and the communities that are relying on them need to be taken care of. They can't just be cast aside and said, well, you can learn how to code or you had a good run. You know, that's, that's enough. But, you know, our energy security is critical, particularly in light of what's going on in Russia, but our climate security is critical. And I think those are two goals that need to proceed in a level that's consistent with our party's stance as being the party of science. Folks online are saying you need to hold the mic a little higher. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what was that? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's, it's, I think the, I'm sorry, the, the question was, how do I plan to interact with red county voters? Is that a fair? Okay. Well, I, I, I do it all the time, have done it all the time, consistently do it all the time. We're just, at, like I said, it was just in Berks County of, been going to more red counties than every any campaign in the, in this race. I've been to all 67 counties four or five times already, and the interaction and the messaging is consistent and it's well received. Make no mistake, my campaign isn't about turning Potter County blue. That's impossible. But we can't turn and turn tail and run and say, well, it's Potter County. Let it go 80-20. That, that's the wrong message. We can't do that. You know, that's how, Demo that's how Democrats lose. That's how Republicans scale up. And our message has been consistent and it's been well received in these counties. And the margins, you know, that we helped generate in 2018, Scott Wagner didn't even compete essentially west of the Susquehanna. You know, we were that strong. And if you're able to suffocate a Republican momentum surge in Western Pennsylvania, they have a very, if not impossible, time of winning and scaling up statewide here in Pennsylvania. So there are a lot of unreachable voters in these counties, any more than a Republican could march in here and try to get your votes. How many votes would he or she get? Probably very few, I suspect. There are your Republican counterparts in counties just like ours reversed. But there are reachable voters. There are thoughtful people that don't want the way the Democratic, excuse me, the Republican Party's headed. And having that conversation and making that argument has been a core value of this campaign all the way back to our first race. We've been a true 67 county campaign, every county, every vote. It's part of our logo. 